So today we're going to be going through the shipping plan and we're going to do this in detail. What I'm actually going to do is screen share with you guys the entire process of doing the shipping plan so you can follow along and get your inventory to the warehouse as soon as possible and with fewer problems. Before you start this process, before you actually start the shipping plan on Amazon itself, you're going to want to have these six things with you before starting that. So number one, you want to have the ship from address. That is the address of your supplier or the address where your goods start their journey to the Amazon warehouse. Number two, you're going to want to know the shipping company. So is it UPS, is it FedEx, is it DHL, is it TNT? Who is actually shipping your goods? Very important to have that as well. Three, four, five, and six are actually related, but you wanna know the number of cartons. How many big cardboard boxes is your supplier sending for you? Or are you sending in? How many of those big shipping boxes that hold your units inside, how many of them are going in? the weight of those cartons, the dimensions of those cartons, and the number of units per carton. So per big cardboard shipping box, how many of your individual units are inside there? Next, I just quickly want to touch on case packed versus individual products shipping plans. These are the two types of shipping plans that you can do. I prefer case packed shipping plans. This is when all of your units within each carton, within each shipping box, are of the same number. So you have the same number of individual units in that box, and they're the same SKU. It's the same product in each box of the same condition, for example, new. So when all your items are the same, say you're just sending in a thousand of the exact same units, then case pack can work very well. But remember, you do wanna have the same number of units in each box and this might be something you need to discuss with your supplier in some cases with case packed you may end up with for example 10 boxes of 30 units and then one box of 10 units and in that case you can do two case packed shipping plans so one for the first 10 boxes and then one for that last box and if you do these shipping plans in quick succession then you're probably going to end up with the same warehouse address anyway. The other way for this type of scenario where you have different amounts of units in each carton or where perhaps you're sending different types of products in the same carton, so product number one, two and three all going in one box, then you're going to do a individual products shipping plant. The reason I like case packed is because this allows quite fast receival of your goods at the warehouse as well. So Amazon will scan the case packed carton or what they call a case then when it's the shipping plan. And then they will just have to scan one unit inside and they know, okay, we've got 30 of those in there and they put it straight into inventory. So this is the difference here and you can choose what's gonna work best for you. But with this in mind and if you've got all of this together, then let's move straight over to the screen. You're ready to start your shipping plan. So what you guys are gonna do is come into your Seller Central account and you're gonna to go to Inventory, Manage Inventory, and you will be on this page. You'll see your listings here and on the listing that you're now sending inventory for, you're gonna come over to this box on the right-hand side where it says Edit. Click on the drop-down select send replenish inventory and the screen will come up so first of all on the left here we have shipping plan and we need to choose whether we're creating a new shipping plan which is what we're going to do in most instances or if we're adding to an existing shipping plan so here create new shipping plan ship from this is where we're going to input that ship from address that our supplier gives us their exact address where the goods start their journey here, our marketplace destination, which you need to obviously choose as well, depending on your home marketplace in Europe or North America. Here, we need to choose whether we're sending in individual products 
or case packed items. Once you've selected this correctly, you're going to click on continue to shipping plan. So on this next page, immediately we can see our ship from address, case packed items, and now we need to put in this information. First of all, our units per case. And this is why it's so important to have this ready beforehand. Also number of cases. So you're going to input this as your supplier has given it to you. As you input these fields, it's going to actually total or tally up these units. Uh, and you should have the correct number here of the total number of units you're sending. Then we click on continue. Over here, the next screen, very important, is that we now need to choose who prepares these products. And over here, we can select who will apply the labels. So we can have Amazon do this at a cost to us. Or if you or your supplier are going to be adding these labels to the products, you're going to select seller. And this is the one I recommend to keep your costs down. And we can click on continue. On this next page, it's now going to bring up all the details we've input and give you the option to print labels for this page. These will be the FNSKUs, the Fulfillment Network Stock Keeping Units that need to go on to every single individual unit. It's not the UPC that goes onto your product. It is this label, the FNSKU. It's good practice to also just note the size over here that they would like this label to be printed onto the product with. I always note this and also send it to the supplier. Then we can click on print labels for this page to actually see these codes. It will download these codes over here and we can open up this folder. You'll be able to view them in a document and save them. Barcode, very important. The title here can be absolutely anything. It doesn't have to be what they give you. And you can in fact change this around. The condition, very important, new. And then in some instances, it can be good practice to also put made in China somewhere along with this FNSKU. Again, this goes on to every single individual unit. So if you're doing little packaging boxes around your yoga mats, you need to have this code on each one of those boxes. Now we have printed these off, we can continue. Now we are going to get a nice overview. Over here, a screen comes up where we can rename our shipment. And I strongly recommend that you do this to a name that you can track over time. And it's just much easier to remember which products, which order. It's also going to just give you an overview of the SKUs, the cases and the units, and then the ship to address exactly where you need to ship to as well. Now we'll get more information on that in the next step. We can now click on approve shipment. Now this has been approved. We can see our shipment name here. We can see our ship from address. We can see it's case packed one SKU. There's no preparation fees because we're taking care of that. You have a shipment ID here. This can be very effective if you ever need to contact Amazon about the shipment in, in any way. And then we also have our ship to address over here and we can work on shipment. Once we are working on the shipment, the first thing to note here most importantly is the ship to address. We now have the exact Amazon warehouse address where we need to send this to. And this is what you need to give to your supplier or freight forwarder. So they know exactly where the goods need to go to. Over here, we can see shipment status. This is just going to tell you where in the pipeline your inventory is. Currently, we're working. So we could be manufacturing or getting it ready for shipping. Then we would have this as shipped. Then we would have it as uh, being delivered and then we would have it as closed. Over here, we can review and modify our units. The first thing to note is almost always you're going to have small parcel delivery here. I'm shipping individual boxes. When you do do pallets, you're then going to select this one over here. But for most of the time, I'm shipping individual boxes. Small parcel delivery is fine. The carrier. Here we can select the carrier we are going to be using. So you may be using an Amazon partnered carrier and this can give you additional benefits in terms of things being received and uh, more leeway in certain areas. However, you may well be choosing other carrier and then selecting from this drop down which exact shipper you're going to be using for this delivery. 
Then as we scroll down here, you can choose how this shipment will be packed. If you're sending everything in one box, you're going to select this option. Most of the time you may be doing multiple boxes, especially for private label and bigger quantities. This is actually something new I haven't seen before uh, and it should apply to all marketplaces. I'm currently just doing a shipment for Europe, but here you can see that this is an FBA manual processing fee. It goes into effect on October 9, 2018 and it applies to shipments received at fulfillment centers without box content information. So if you give the box content information, you shouldn't incur these fees, but this is something to note as well. They're charging 0.06 pounds here per unit. So for 480 units, they're charging 28.8 pounds. The thing is, I think if you provide this info, you won't incur this fee, but this is something to note. And if you are doing shipments before October 9, you're not going to incur any of these fees. Here we can set the number of boxes that we're sending. And this is going to, again, pertain to the cases, the cartons, the big cardboard boxes that hold your individual units. So here we have six and we can set number of boxes. What that is going to do is then give us these six sections to input our data. And again, remember, we already have the box weight. We already have the box dimensions on hand. So this is really quick and easy. Note here, single cartons, that is just one of those big boxes that hold your individual units. They cannot exceed 30 kgs. Cartons between 15 and 30 kgs, this is almost all of the time, need to have heavy package label on them. Very important. Have your supplier do this. This is important. And I'm going to link on this video here the video I made all about packaging and labeling requirements. So th sending things in as sets, sending all different types of items in. If you want to know exactly how to do your packaging and labeling, to be in line with Amazon, you can watch that video here as well. So box weight we're going to put in is 21 kgs in this instance. So we definitely need our heavy package label, then just input the dimensions as the supplier has given to you. And here's a new thing here, you can actually print heavy package labels. This is awesome. So if you guys need these really easy little link here, you click on this and it's going to bring up an exact heavy package label. Lastly, over here, you're going to see that you can actually print box labels. Now these are different to the FNSKUs that go on every single unit. These labels pertain to our big boxes over here. So each of these is going to go into the big cardboard box, the carton that holds our individual units inside. This will tell Amazon exactly what is inside that box as well as the size and weight of that box. And it just makes receiving your inventory that much easier. Make sure again, you note the size of this label and send it off and then print box labels. Again, you will just download this and save it and send it off to your supplier and then complete shipment. Now that we've hit complete shipment, you'll instantly see an area to enter tracking numbers over here. At the top here, you can see our shipment status is actually now ready to ship. And we have a button here that says mark as shipped. We're not going to do this yet, but as soon as the supplier has shipped, we can actually click on this and we must make sure that we also input our tracking number here that we get from that supplier or that freight forwarder. So for example, if UPS is doing the shipment for you, they give you one tracking number for the whole shipment, you're just going to come and put that same tracking number in here and then save all mark as shipped and this will change to shipped and you will wait for an email from Amazon which tells you the freight forward is checked in their trailer and we are busy receiving your inventory. Over here, you can see this button, return to shipping queue, our shipping queue for all different shipments over here, old ones will be closed. And our new one over here, which we've named well and can identify easily is over here and it is ready to ship. And as soon as we have the tracking numbers from our supplier in that they've shipped or our freight forwarder in that they've shipped the goods, we're going to click on track shipment. And then over here, we are going to actually input the tracking number mark as shipped. Once you've actually done that and input the tracking numbers, this is going to change to shipped. 
and when it's in transit to the warehouse you're simply going to wait for Amazon to send you an email to the email address that you have with Seller Central they're going to tell you your freight forwarder has checked in their trailer when they do so and at that time you're actually going to start having inventory become available on your listing and if you click on this little arrow here it's actually going to tell you what's available what's inbound what's reserved what's unfulfillable and the total so and so it's going to move from inbound to available and as it becomes available this is actually your inventory becoming available for the public to purchase so this is the stage at which you have actually completed everything and you are now ready to focus on sales so I hope this makes us a little less daunting for you guys and that you found value in this. If you did find some value in this video, please remember to like it below and also consider subscribing. We're going to have a lot more great content coming your way very, very shortly. And I hope you guys are making some real progress with your business. Anyway, guys, I will see you in the next video.